Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our Micro Moment podcast uh, show. Uh, today is Thursday, the 7th of January, 10 o'clock Central Time. And uh, we have our, our, our crew here. We have Deshaun in the center there. And we have Micah, who's sort of our moderator for today. And we have Tim and we have Randy. And we're, so we're covering all aspects of, of what the subject's going to be. The subject this weekend or this week is pros and cons of trading options over stocks. And they say it's real basic, but it's really developed over a period of time. And I'm going to be in, being the old guy here talk about how we developed that and, uh, and what motivated how things changed, uh, you know, made it successful, uh, option trading platforms and so on. And then go into a real life circumstance, which will deal with uh, which will. Uh, deal with Randy, whose life was totally changed by using options over just having stock that he hopes appreciates. And then we'll go in and uh, with everybody contributing something along the line. And Micah kind of directed here if we, uh, you know, stutter and start talking about rainbows and stuff, you know, that uh, we probably shouldn't be talking about. And by the way, Micah just discovered a rainbow today, very first time. That was the way I looked out the window and said, oh, it's blue and red and pink and that. I go, that, that's, a, that's a rainbow. He never yeah. heard of it. It was a really, really that's pretty. Right. This morning. Yeah. And so we'll, we'll you know, certainly welcome any comments you have to say, any questions you have. We've got about 45, 50 minutes here. It's all we're allowed on this podcast, so we'll cover it. So I'm just going to kind of get started right now in uh, Earl. Very first thing right off the bat. Pop that question up. Let me read it real quick and get first time view live one. Okay, great, Earl. Hey, thanks for being here. We appreciate it. Mm-hmm. Okay. A long time ago, uh, we've been, I've been doing this for about 50 years, and um, a long time ago, 50 years ago, I started when I was in college, um, there wasn't much you could do. You couldn't do this like you can do it today. Now, the reason I'm talking about this is to show you the significance of how it used to be and why it's so successful today and why it wasn't known, you know, all those 50 years by everybody in the world. But uh, back then, uh, Merrill Lynch, they had one broker that could handle, in the whole state of Florida, only one broker that could handle options. One. That was it. Now, I don't, they probably got jeans up, but they only had one. And back then, you couldn't get any of the information you get today on the Internet because the Internet did not exist. It did not exist. So your only recourse was to have a broker. You'd either physically have to go over there. In our case, Merrill Lynch, downtown Dallas, and my daughter started trading you know, way back when. And I've got pictures here in, in front of the Merrill Lynch office where she would have to go over there and uh, talk to a broker and get him to execute a trade. And they didn't have much information at all. They didn't have option tables like you have today. Very little information that they could even pull up. But that's how crude it was. And then about the time I really got into the full swing of the thing, which was probably 19, I've been doing it, you know, I got out of the Air Force in 1972 and, and really kind of got into it full time. And uh, things begin to change. About about 15 years later, uh, when I left Merrill, there for the first time you could pull up option tables on the internet. Very first time, and uh, and you could also do these trades. You used to use E Trade, still use E Trade. And uh, E Trade was so crude back in those days; it was incredible. I remember when Dial came along. That, then you could actually do these things by taking remember the the key. What do you call those tone keys? Whatever it was on phones. And doing it very, very complicated, very, very poor as far as doing it. And uh, so that's how it started developing. And slowly things got better and better and better. So about 20 years ago, we formed um, Compound Stock Earnings, which all of you pretty much remember. That. We did done seminars, hundreds, hundreds, hundreds of seminars all over, all over the country. And uh, we have clients in every part of the world. Everywhere. We have tremendous clients in China, in Russia even. And uh, so I'm sure they have something to do with our elections. But uh, I think I think it's significant that uh, that this is a, it makes so much sense to do options versus stocks. Essentially, when you're doing a stock, is I'm going to have a testimonial on this for you in a second. You know, the whole thing of buying a stock and hoping it goes up in value is it's been around forever, and uh, you don't hardly make much money. Number one, you don't have much control, and you speculate a lot. And these are just across the board comments and that goes back to day traders and such who are a lot of speculators and they lose 80% of their money according to the CBOA. Um, with covered calls for the first time, you had the ability to buy stock and make money from that stock, like buy stock, like real estate, like an apartment, 
and renting it. You rented it via the option. Now remember, all this stuff has just come over now in that, not that many years. And one of the first true live representatives, which I'm going to turn over to Randy, Randy took our seminar, very first seminar we did in Atlanta, and learned about options, I think, pretty much for the first time. And Randy is now retired, has been retired for 15, 16, 17 years. He's been with us that long. And um, Randy retired, a huge company. He'd been with him his entire life as he got out of college. And they had a buyout. And they offered all the senior guys there a buyout. But they had him go to financial counseling first to see if really they could live on the stocks they'd accumulated and stuff. And Randy was one of the few that, that they let retire based on the stocks he had. The reason he had the same stocks that all those other guys had, huge company, I'm not going to say who it is, but huge company. And uh, he was able to retire because he had gone to the seminar and he had learned about options and how to use options to produce income. He wasn't going to sell a stock. He wasn't going to sell a stock at all. So he wasn't dependent upon the stock going up in value to make a living. Most people, if they don't do options, they're hoping the stock goes up so they can sell it and get money. You know, if the stock's down, they're going to lose money. And if, they, if it's up and they sell it, they're going to spend the money. With options, you keep your stock. You don't care if it goes up, down, or sideways if you're using our techniques. And so Randy was able to retire very successfully. He still has the same stock and trades it. You know, I don't know, $5 billion, $5 billion shares that Randy has. Trades it, you know, every day and uh, has very success. Why don't you kind of bring it up to date, Randy? Because you're, you're our real live person here that, that, that has gone through the whole process and can tell the advantages that those options add at this particular time in history to your situation. Yeah, Joe. Um, yeah, that that's right. I, I first attended the covered call seminar back in 2006. And um, I started learning how to generate income on stocks because that's all there was back then is stocks. And then you could sell an option against it. And those are all monthly expirations. And because I learned how to do that, how to take the stock that I had and generate income, I was able to take the retirement buyout package. In 2007, I retired. Now that was what, 13 years ago. And so I've been using the compound stock earnings techniques ever since to uh, generate income on covered calls. And that is selling a call, like Joe said, renting out your stock month after month after month to uh, get cash income. And that's what the whole process is about. It's not speculation. So we're, I don't speculate with stocks. That's what the, the all the other gurus out there in the market are going to teach you how to speculate, how to, how to buy, buy an option and hope it goes up and then and sell it. And then if it doesn't, you cut your losses by getting out of it. That's not, that's not this process. The covered call is to generate monthly income while you hold those stocks. So there's, Thousands and thousands of people, Joe, you know that people have come to our seminar. They've had stocks for years and years and years just sitting there watching them go up and down because they didn't want to sell them. And maybe they were generating two or three percent um, income a year on, on dividends. And they were just sitting there watching them go up and down. Then they learn how they can actually rent that stock out without having to sell it and generate monthly income. And now it's weekly income because as you know joe that this the cboe has just continued to change the option process to improve the results that we can get from renting out our stocks um, they went to weekly options which gave us the ability to earn income every week the uh, commissions now are basically zero or are real close to zero on on selling options and, and buying stocks it's just uh, every single change that's made along the way has improved the ability to generate income by renting out uh, stocks. And yeah, let, 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 let me yeah, let me interrupt here. When we started, you came you when you started teaching the seminars. Also, and when you were attending the seminars back then, way back then, all you could do is buy a stock and 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 sell a call. Finally, you could finally do that. But the problem was they only had expirations once a month. Third. Friday is when they expired. And you and I used to project and use my little compound calculator. If you if you got three or three or four percent a month, you had ten start off with ten thousand in ten years, you had like three and a half million dollars. Isn't that about right? Something like that. Right. Yep. Well, now that was getting we were average we were saying you're gonna get three percent a month. Now you can get three percent a week. And and that they've made that and then they've eliminated commissions. 
and they have all this great information that you can do it yourself. So that is one of the advantages in keeping with our title here, the advantages of, of options over stocks. You're not sitting there hoping to live off that stock and getting dividends and, and having to liquidate the stock, but ultimately for the long run, you're not going to have your money at all. But you're renting those stocks just like real estate, and and they just keep making it easier and easier. And and you've obviously mastered that very well. Now you teach multiple courses, uh, not only in the micro moment stuff, but going back to the old original course that you taught originally. But everything's changed. The yields are just huge versus what they used to be a long time ago. You know, and uh, so I think. Yeah. We used, to, we used to hope to, uh, to, or to strive to generate income of 3 or 4 or 5% per month. Now, that can be made in a week and even sometimes in, in a day. It's, um, it's, it's just amazing. But one thing are the advances of the, of the computer, the Internet, and the broker platforms that, that allow, as you say, all the information, the ease of uh, entering and exiting positions, all kinds of uh, data about where the on, on charting and um, in addition to the proprietary charting uh, Joe that you've developed that that allow us to find positions that have a high probability of going up but not speculating that they have to go up and being able to rent them out month after month and if it's a stock that we want to keep we can still rent it out we have uh, other techniques on how to rent out that stock without having to ever sell it so it's, it's just unbelievable the advances that keep happening. Yeah, that's why this history is so important so people learn and understand this just didn't happen yesterday. I mean, the options have been around forever, but you just couldn't do anything with them because you couldn't get to them. Only the, the brokers could get to them, and that on a very limited basis. Randy, back when I learned all this stuff from my dad, back in he was doing this when I was in high school, but they didn't have computers. And I remember the day that he had to just call his broker every day, sometimes by the hour. You know, and that wasn't very efficient. Finally, he got a Radio Shack computer. Oh my God, it it was just totally changed. You couldn't you couldn't do anything with it. The internet hadn't developed that far, but it was a computer somewhat. So you know, and uh, you thought he'd died and gone to heaven because now he could get some financial information, but he still couldn't trade, buy stocks, and and sell options on it. But you would have thought just that small little. Little increment in time there, you know, just huge. And now we know where it is today, and it's probably even going to get better. Yeah. But uh, yeah, Randy, I have a curiosity on on um, on what you're saying too, because I I find that um, throughout, you know, as the market kind of evolves, people have a, a very different view of um, each financial tool you could call it. Um, so I mean, at, through the years what a stock is is always foundationally the same thing right a stock a share and and even as these new things are created like um e-minis is probably the most recent one i can think of that kind of emerged as the financial tool uh the mini futures but do you think what do you think about the perception of that do you think it's it's because the risk associated comes with the um with the tool, it seems. So people, you know, will think that one tool is more risky than others. So metals are safe and options are risky. Where, where in your mind does, and then Deshaun and, and Tim, hopefully, where in your mind does risk live? Is it actually the tools fault? Are options inherently risky? Or, you know, is Forex safer than options? Or, you know, how does that kind of operate in, in your mind? Well, first, I, I think the biggest risk is doing something that you have no idea what you're doing. So there's lots and lots of reports about, you know, all the, the brand new traders that have uh, come because of the COVID and the stay at home and everybody has all kinds of extra time there on the computer. All of a sudden they're jumping in um, and a lot of stories about like Robin Hood and, and because it was so easy to get on and just do it. The process is very easy to execute, mm -hmm. but where the risk comes in is you don't know what you're doing. You, yeah. you need to get educated. You need to practice, and, 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 and we preach practicing with virtual trading as you're starting off to make sure that you really understand what you're doing. But then getting the education, and we provide all kinds of education opportunities throughout the week. In fact, I think, Deshaun, didn't you just, uh, it, was it this morning that you did a training session uh, live in the market online? Yeah, uh, kind of yesterday. Oh, yesterday. Okay. Um, but we have all kinds of training not only training opportunities, but then also weekly coaching opportunities that, that take you step by step through the process live during the market. 
Um, and so that's why I think the biggest risk is is doing something that you just have no idea what you're doing. It'd be like like a 12 year old getting in a car, easy to start up, and he starts going, probably going to crash into something because they have no idea yeah. what they're doing. That's what right. I think the big thing is is getting yeah. the right education and then selecting the process and technique that best fits your psychology, your mentality, you know, your risk profile, and not not jumping into the deep end when you don't know how to swim. You know, yeah, and keep, well. yeah, in keeping with that pattern here, the pros and cons of trading options over stocks and exactly what Randy's talking about. Uh, and then let, let me give you another example. Back when we first got started, now we've, I've been doing this a long time, and, and, and we started with a radio program here in Dallas and ultimately went national. And when we started, there was this uh, lady that had this site that talked about covered calls. And, and uh, she didn't like me. I don't know why. All other women like me. But for whatever reason, she didn't like me. And it's so on the radio. She would always say these guys. I didn't know what, what the hell I was doing because I wasn't old enough. And I was probably 10, 15 years older than she was. Ultimately, we had the big uh, downfall in the, what, the Black Friday. It was the Black Friday. The date on the Black Friday was uh, October 19, 1987. This is the advantage of doing options over just owning the stock. That option gives you advantage to do things with your stock to make money. Forget about the black market. They can go to hell in a handbasket. You've got that ability through that option to continue to make money on those stocks. You don't have to go out there and sell them for a loss. So she had a tremendous number of uh, customers. And uh, she had a radio show, just like ours. I think it was an hour before our radio show. And back during that Black Black Monday or whatever it was, Black Friday, she kept her clients. They kept just buying stocks and selling the call. And then slowly things got worse and worse. So they kept their stocks, and the stocks kept going down in value, and she would just have them keep selling covered calls. But she didn't have our techniques, which is using the covered calls, which is the advantage of the calls over just on the stock of manipulating the value of that stock to continue to make money, whether it goes up or down. You can only do that with a, with a call. You can only do it with a call. She didn't know that. She didn't do it. And at one point, she even claimed that she had a patent on covered calls. <laughs> I mean, you talk about a you know real DA here. But anyhow, uh, she's out of business and has been business for a long time now because eventually her customers started coming over to our seminars because I said, well, what have you been doing over there? And she says, well, as the market's been going down, our stock's been going down, she just keeps us going out there and selling out a further out covered call. Well, eventually, the whole thing just just disappears, right? That's where that's an example of using the, the, the call when you know what you're doing to, to and using our techniques. It doesn't make you different. As long as the stock stays in business, we have said forever, all the stock when you're selling these calls against, all it has to do is just stay in business. If it goes out of business, you're burned, just like everybody else would be. So far, I don't think we've had one go out of business. One time, some stock... So I know, years and years and years ago went out of business, but it was not a material thing. And and but that's that's you know that shows you again the progress of what's going on. I don't know if she she was just you know didn't know what she was doing, but or had no recognition of what how the thing had developed in the first place. And now, even though Randy still makes tremendous returns doing more traditional covered calls, he has adapted his service to where he includes a more or more progressive, you might say, uh, micro moment type trading into the covered calls. They fantastic returns for a broad bit of the population, the investing population here. Our micro moment, which is what Randy or uh, Randy referred to Deshaun was doing this morning, we do that every single day. That's a service. Every single day we do micro moment trading for one hour. And uh, today, Deshaun does it, Tim does it. These are our two traders. And today... They made 26.5972% on nine trades, Apple and Spice. SPY is what Deshaun trades. Tim trades Apple. Huge, huge. They're up uh, 26 point something today, and as of yesterday, they were up 108 for the week. So they'll probably end up 150 plus to 200% for the week. Where can you do that? You can't do that. And that's to go into the full spectrum. That's the advantage of covered calls over just on the stock. And, and, you know, Randy's a perfect prime example of that. He's got a stock he's, he's never going to sell. You know, he didn't have to, he didn't, Randy, you don't worry about that stock going up or down three, four bucks, you know, over the course of a day or two. It doesn't make any difference because he can use the techniques, using our techniques, our covered call techniques. You can, 
make that thing produce more money. You can take a stock that's going out of business and make it produce more money and get all your money back, you know, at the same time. So it's a huge advantage in in, in the options versus just owning the stock. And, and depending on what technique are you, if you're using our micro moment techniques, you don't, you don't buy stock. You don't buy stock. You're never in a trans, you're never in a transaction for more than 15 to 30 seconds. You're always back to cash every single day. Obviously you're always in cash over the weekend and you never care when the market opens in the morning and cut on that trading screen at eight thirty, eight fifteen in the morning, you central time. You don't care if the market's up or down. It makes no difference because you're going to trade the activity. You're trading the activity. And that's you can't do that with 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 just stocks, you can, but you can do it with the options. And you're getting in total absolute tremendous leverage. You don't have the stocks to get leverage with stocks. You got to borrow money from the broker. There's a margin. Margin. That's a very good point. And you're with, gonna you're gonna pay a lot of interest. Go ahead, Mike. Within that, it's really interesting because, <clears throat> I mean, we're we're viewing this from a perspective of, of stocks versus options. Um, but one thing we've been really interesting that we've seen is how different the options are depending on the stock mm -hmm. right an option is is a very versatile term um deshaun what what have you seen like is is it is it just that there's like am i am i off base is there slight differences on on if you're trading say you know an apple option versus a tesla option or or how different are those and what do those differences look like even within just options well, so as far as the options concerned, like trading different options from my perspective, now I just yeah, think, um, but obviously the the price the price of the the price you can get in buy them at are the differences, and then like um, I guess the spread between what you can buy and what you sell at are like the major differences that I see with within like stock different stocks and ETFs or whatever. Okay. Yeah. What do, you, what do you focus on, and why? Why do you choose that placement within options? Well, so specifically, what I focus on is spy. It's the is spy the the S and P five hundred. <laughs> so, what I focus on is is the delta, the price I can get, and then the I go with the highest delta I can get with the lowest spread between my bid and ask price. Okay. See, and and Micah what Deshaun is talking about, those are the things you have to learn to be a good trader. Yeah. You know, anybody can just go buy an option and then try to sell it, but you have to learn the things that Deshaun was just talking about are important things of what ones do you select and, and how do you select them that increases your probability of success of yeah. being able to generate that income. We just got a, a great, we just got a great comment. Hey, throw that Ricky Hill back up. This is Ricky. Uh, Ricky, this is Ricky. Ricky, we got his last name. I already forgot it. He says, thank you guys. With your teaching, I've been able to retire early with the ability to manage my portfolios to live a great retirement. Just started 7120, not long ago, with live money. Just retired 123120. Love you guys. There you go. There he is. Awesome. Yeah. Example. He learned the process, um, used it. Learned it, took the coaching. He's he's been in a lot of coaching sessions. Yeah, I've and, seen him a lot. And six months later, he's now retired and able to now generate his income using all the techniques that he's learned. That's incredible. Yeah, I think it's just so obvious the advantages of, of dealing with the calls. It doesn't mean you're abandoning stocks. You're using the stocks as your real estate. Yes. But then eventually, eventually, and Randy's Randy teaches across with all his seminars across the day. And you can get his seminars. Go to our, our website www.microwomentrading.com. You see all Randy's uh, uh, seminars and seminars of uh, Deshaun and uh, and Tim, and uh, and see the tremendous advantage you have with dealing with with micro moment trading. Uh, it's just incredible. And and now let's try and go down to uh, Tim. Not down. Go up to Tim and Deshaun. Let's say. Now, now they don't deal with stocks at all. You know, they we morphed this into just trading the options, which means the advantage of the options over stock is you have you have incredible leverage, damn near hundred percent. Instead of paying three hundred, two hundred, and whatever stock for Apple, you pay for for one of the contracts. You know, you know, a buck fifty a share, two bucks a share. I think Tim did something today at uh, at dollar sixty one, dollar seventeen. 
and you're in, you got a contract for 100 shares, you'll have hardly money in there and you'll be out and make a fortune. In fact, here's the, here's the difference is, uh, another difference in using options versus just buying the stock. Take a virtual account. Don't, don't try real money. Just take a virtual account. And we used to tell people, Randy and I, a long time ago, yeah. when they uh, had virtual accounts, you know, put a few bucks. Don't put much money. Put a few bucks into trading this, and that way if you lose it, you know you're going to lose a lot of money. Go to a virtual account. You're not going to lose anything. Put 2,000 virtual dollars in there. They give to you. 2,000 virtual dollars. Make 6% per week. 6% six per week. Now, today, these guys, if you follow them, made 26% for the day. Just 6% per week. That's going to compound into $820,000 or $30,000, $40,000, $50,000 in two years of trading. Not trading every day. Just 6% a week. You may do it in one transaction walk away. Go have a good time. Uh, that much money. And at that point, at that point, you know, you can take – that eight hundred thousand bucks. If you're trading it, you never add any money to that two thousand except the compounds money that you, you accumulate. You're going to be able to make forty, fifty thousand bucks a week. It's going to be great for kids. They're still home, living in the basement of their parents' house. You can't afford to go to college, you know, because their parents won't lend them any money because they know they're not very smart in the first place. And what the hell are you going to do with a degree, right? So they're going to be able to make fifty thousand bucks a week. You know, bank the other, you know. Hundred and fifty thousand for the rest of the month or whatever. And you can do that and we have people doing it. You know, Ricky, there's Ricky. You know, I'm, and many, many others. When you attend that seminar that we do five days a week, the micro moment training seminar, you hear these guys what they're doing and what they're making. And uh and you're following those trades, you know, and, and learning. They're not doing the trades for you. They're teaching you what you gotta look at to do the trades. They're not doing trades for you. They're not it, it, you know, they're not picking stocks. They're saying, okay, you want to do anything, you want QQQ, you want to do Exxon, whoever. And you get you got our advanced charting, proprietary advanced charting, and they teach you how to read that chart. They teach you all this stuff, and pretty soon you're doing it yourself. It's not complicated. You know, it's not nearly as complicated as Randy's rules. If he goes back a hundred years, he's forgotten most of them. But he's very successful. And uh, and and he has we have a training manual, 135 pages in developed over time. Micro moment, there's only one thing you do. When you see a little thing turn red, you get out of it. No matter what, you just get out. Just sell it. Get out. Walk away from it. And with uh, that, what well, kind of huh? I'm curious, Tim. Um, on the on the topic of, of options versus stocks, I'm assuming there's there's people in here, you know, that that have traded exclusively options or exclusively stocks. How did you did you trade? In stocks, or did you just kind of hold portfolio positions before you started trading options? What was that experience like for you first? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Thanks for thanks for asking. Um, you know, I, I started this a uh, year and a half uh, ago, and um, you know, my my strategy was have someone manage it for me, uh, basically. Right, bought stocks, have been doing that for years, and just really got tired of the poor returns yeah. over the years. Um, started looking into options and, um, you know, found that there was, there was really four key things that made options for me the better choice with, with my investing, uh, of course, and everyone's mentioned this, the cost efficiency. We have a greatly increased cost efficiency. Uh, I think they're, ask, they're actually less risky than equities, uh, than just buying and holding equities in many reasons. Um, they also, you know, deliver uh, and the potential for a much higher return than yeah. stocks, um, as well as they have a, a, a number of, of strategic uh, alternatives. Um, and what that gives me, it gives me ultimate control over my money. Um, and what we do on our side of the house, Sean and I do on, you know, our side of the house is micro moment trading. We're, we're in and out of trades in 10 to 20 seconds and we're in cash about 95% of the time, if, if not more, safe old cash, right? There's no risk in holding cash. And I want, I want to go back to something that uh, Randy said. Um, I think this is so much about education. Um, I was just reading in Investopedia. This is great. It said words like risky or dangerous have been incorrectly attached to options by the financial media and certain popular figures in the market. Uh, and that's so true. People jump in, they do a few trades, they get burned because they had no plan. They, they had no education and they had no plan. Um, 
with our proprietary charting, it, it really takes much of the guesswork out of trading the way that Deshaun and I trade on the micro moment side of the house. Um, yeah. you know. could, could you clarify, I mean, when you're, when you're trading on your side of the house, like if anybody has never traded an option, you're, you're saying you can get in and out of a position in like 30 seconds. Mm -hmm. Now you have, you know, a little Tesla chart up here and as ridiculous as it is, right. It was, when we started the podcast, it was a 786, mm -hmm. 807, just broke 800, right? So, like, that's all well and good, but we've been on for 30 minutes. It's increased $7, and I would have to invest $8, but, you know, that takes 27 minutes. So how do you actually complete a trade in 30 seconds? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So I use uh, the Thinkorswim trap, uh, platform, and, uh, you know, it allows me to one-click in uh, – to a position by the open and get in a position and I can immediately set my sell to close. Um, the online platforms have really developed that allow us to move very, very quickly, which I think is what has exploded this type of investing is yeah. the, our ability to go ahead, make our own decisions based on proprietary charting get into a position very quickly and immediately get out of that position. You know, we're, we're only looking for uh, small moves. Um, I trade Apple. Uh, Apple tends to have uh, some um, uh, great pricing in the very beginning of the session, very beginning of the morning. We're usually able to go in there and pick, uh, get one or two trades very quickly because it tends to move very quickly in the first two minutes. Um, you just cannot do that with stocks. Uh, it's just, it's impossible to do that. I mean, you could, if you're, you could buy and sell a stock in a few seconds if you wanted to, but we take advantage of the highly leveraged uh, ability of options to go ahead and work it out. Yeah. So let me give you a good example of what Tim's talking about. Apple transaction did this morning. Remember, he's, he's paying such a small fraction. This And this, this Mike, is how you get out without waiting for those big moves. He paid a dollar seventeen per share for a hundred share contract. In other words, one hundred seventeen bucks. He's into that deal. One contract. You can only trade contracts. You can trade as many contracts as you want, but you has to has to be a hundred shares. He paid a hundred. He paid a dollar seventeen. He did more than I'm just. This is just per contract. It went up within within less than uh, than fifteen seconds. It went to a dollar twenty three. He sold it. Mm -hmm. Well, that that few cents difference is a five point one two eight two percent return in that many seconds. So he doesn't sit there and, and wait. He doesn't need to. Only another one. He paid the dollar sixty one. Got out at a dollar sixty eight four point three four. Uh, Deshaun got into spy for a dollar fifty two a share. So one hundred fifty two bucks for the contract, and it went to a dollar sixty. He was out at five point two six three. That one was six seconds. Six second, yeah, six second trade, <laughs> and that's what we're talking about now. Where you get into trouble with options? Watch CNBC and those two guy got little goatees, you know, and uh, ponytails. They're, they're the old traditional way that you trade. You trade. That's why nobody believes in options. You can watch them. They come over there and say, "Oh, I went into Exxon option, blah blah blah," because I think the weather's going to be good and people going to have to buy a lot of gas, all that kind of stuff. And I'm <laughs> six months out, or I'm three months out, and I'm waiting for them, and I'm going to sell the blah 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 things that can disappear to nothing during that time. You know, they'd have to shave their goatees. They'd be in such disgrace. You know, yeah, it yeah. would just be terrible. But but that's not how you trade. That's the wrong way to trade. Options. That's why people lose money when they do lose money doing that. You, you got this like in, just like I gave with the demonstration of our, one of our competitors. You got to do it right. You can't do it wrong. You Joe, can't you just say, know, you know. You don't think they can predict the weather? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> weather, yeah. I don't yeah, know. Yeah. I can so now, 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 that you, now that you recognize rainbows, hey, it's going to change our whole game. I'm getting close. <laughs> yeah. I'm always 100% accurate when I predict the weather. The there temperature in an hour is going to be different than it is right now. There you 100 go. 100% guaranteed. There you go. Now, you I, 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 I want to reiterate something that, that Tim said. It, very important. He, he said it really quickly, but it's, it's hugely important, especially for the trading that they're doing. It's those intraday streaming charts, the proprietary charting process that you've developed, Joe, that they use and teach. That is what allows them. It's the education and that tool that allows them to do this at a high percent of accuracy. 
They're not just guessing. They're not just shooting in the dark. They're not just saying, oh, I think it's going to do this or that. That chart is letting them see this is the time that it's going into this cycle. And they're in and it gets in the cycle and they're out. That's why they can do it. If they didn't have that chart, they wouldn't be able to make these returns. And, you know, you know Tim, has, Tim has a competitor today, Ricky. Says Ricky's the one that retired and did all that, and he says he's also making trades right now. He <laughs> says I love it, and he's like Tim. If you watch Tim, Tim's eyes, you know, you know, Tim, like, Tim, Tim, Tim's been in and out of a couple of things already. I can tell. Probably, by yeah. Since we started this thing, have you been in and out of anything, Tim? Yeah, I did one Apple trade uh, early. What, how long were you in, and what'd you make on it? Uh, let me pull up. Uh, went in at one fifty, was out at one fifty eight. They actually that probably lasted 10 seconds. Okay. Yeah. That's an example. Yeah. Yeah. So, and I, and I better send that to you. <laughs> that's, that's, uh, yeah, okay. We sent it to me. I got it on. Yeah. I've been, so. I've been itching. You can, you, you can see for those that are watching is we're constantly turning our heads and looking because we have charts and, and graphs around that we're looking yeah. at. Is it time to do something? And, and I've been itching to enter, but I just before the webinar today, before the podcast, uh, in the in the half hour before, I did I did four of the micro moment trades like like Tim is um, describing. Except I do it on SPX. It's a, an index itself, the options. And between those four trades, uh, eight point five percent return total in less than an hour. Uh, all four of them were successful and and profitable. And I'm usually in for like a minute, so it's a, it's a little bit slower, um, but. Uh, you don't have to be uh, lightning fast, but the you have to be able to use your broker platform efficiently and be able to place an order quickly after you get in so that you can take advantage of that movement because these are fast movements with the intraday streaming chart. That chart is moving almost second by second right across the screen and you're in them and you're not waiting then to speculate to say, Gee, when is this going to stop going up? You're just taking your profit. Take that profit. Don't get too greedy and lock that profit in as, as quick as you've got it. Well, so you're at them longer, as you know, <laughs> because you're slower, because you're older. And That's you can't right. do that. Hey, look, yeah. okay. Now, Deshaun, nice dark beard, no gray hair in it. Look at Mike, <laughs> a nice dark beard, no gray hair. And then you look at me. <laughs> this is gray That's hair. Right. That's what happened. Tim, me, me, me and Tim, we got the, I still got the hair. You know, yeah, it is getting grayer and grayer every year. Well, this, this is also a musical team, which have, looks at all the guitars and pianos and stuff there on, on Tim's background. And Deshaun is a, is a soul singer and all kinds of, what do you call, what are you and uh, Micah do? Micah's also, we discovered Micah on the ship. What is it? What was that music you sing? Karaoke. Karaoke. Yeah, karaoke. Yeah, and Tim plays. What the hell you do, Randy? I trade. trade. Okay, he trades. He trades and makes money. There you go. There you go. I, I, I play baseball and golf, so I'm I'm on the uh, the sports side. And said I I used to when I was back in grade school and junior high. I played the trumpet, so I I, I was kind of musically inclined back then, but I, I don't do that anymore. Hey, <laughs> Randy, after the after this long and and with a with a beard that distinguished, I would just say I would just tell people you play the opening bell. Like <laughs> there you go. Yep, I go. always wait for that opening bell every day. The yeah. Market bells are my instrument, sir. <laughs> yeah, well, with the beard, with the beard, the color red is he sure as hell can't go to work for CNBC. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm going to quickly mention uh, something we have coming up, and then we, we can get back to it for the last 10 minutes here. Um, but we do have an intro to options um, workshop coming up on, I don't want to misspeak. I think it's this weekend. Yes, it's this weekend, yeah. um, the 9th. So um, that is basically for if you've if you've been trading stocks for a long time and you've never traded options or if you're getting into, you know, the whole thing. Um, it's an intro to options as as far as the, the daunting world. I, I think there is some level of inherent on purpose complication. I don't know. Have you guys noticed this too? Have, has it seemed like anybody, you know, whether, whether it's the brokerage telling you to trade options or, or any part of the media telling you to trade options, they use these really big words. And I know there's some com complicated concepts, right? 
because you bring in the 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 concept of going up or down and increasing in value going up or down it does get a little bit inherently confusing but do you think it's all necessary complication in the the options market or do you think it's just i think they they want it to sound complicated so just like what tim said when when he began he said he was always relying on someone else to, to trade his money for him to try to make the end yeah that's what they're all about they mm -hmm. want you to give them your money so they make it sound like it's so complicated and they're the ones that know how to do it so give them we want to teach you how to do it who 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 is more interested in your money than you are right. we want to teach you how to trade your own money generate your own income on your own time frame whenever it is that you want to be uh, doing the trades whether you want to do it once a month with just the monthly cover call whether you want to do it every 30 seconds with the micro moment trading and there's everything in between yeah. you can well, decide how much yeah. time you want to spend to generate whatever income you want to get. And, and Randy's exactly right. Here's a good example. Mutual funds. Go to any mutual fund, any of them, and, and they'll tell, oh, well, you give us $300 a month when you graduate college or high school for the rest of your life, 40, 50 years, and, we'll, and, and we're going to make 7% a year. We're going to make 7% a year, and that's going to compound it into a billion and a half dollars in 40 years. We're well, not going to be able to buy lunch for a billion and a half dollars in 40 years. But that's beside the point. The point is, 7% a year. These guys did 26% today. Mutual funds are the worst bits of crap on the face of the earth. And that's why none of them, and they don't even make that. They don't even make 7%. Most of them average on average across the board, 2 or 3%, because they're not any good. Because they, they use the old things. They've never changed a thing. They use the old ways of doing things. And the financial community changes, changes every 100 years or longer, you know? So I mean, Joe, isn't like a 2% loss a pretty good year? Very mutual fund. Probably, probably a good year. Yeah, a good example. I've got the article today. Uh, what's his name? Uh, uh, where'd he go? Uh, yeah, who's big mutual? Who's the big fund out in uh, California that handles all the uh, all the uh, Calpers? Calpers, yeah. Calpers, yeah. Calpers. Yeah, the pension fund, yeah. They, but yeah, they say they use they use eight percent, seven to eight percent. Put your, when you, their money, they're going to turn your money into so you can have all kinds of money. At, when you retire, they're just trying to hire a new chief. They last money, they lost money. They lost money. They don't make any money. And now they're trying to hire somebody. And it's the most complicated, you know, convoluted thing I've ever seen. Just trying to find, they can't not go find anybody and they can't find anybody. Nobody will even take the job. I don't know what these guys do when they go to work. You no, know, Joe, back, back in March and April and May, you know, when the market was just really declining. Yeah. There were, untold numbers of funds that just closed up because they were losing so much Absolutely, money. Yeah. They, they couldn't make it. But you see, we, we don't do that. We don't say buy it, hope it goes up. And if it doesn't sell for a loss, we can keep generating income by renting that out as it goes up and down. In fact, we use the fact that it goes up and down to even benefit even more on generating income with the, by selling well, options well, against the well, well, some of your techniques, Randy, you get into something, you, and you made a great return by buying whatever it was and selling the call, and then you sit there and pray that it'll take a big drop because you got a good stock. It ain't going to go anywhere. It can drop three or four dollars or three or four percent or whatever, and you end up making a fortune on just getting out of that damn call. You still got the stock, but now you made another fortune. Now you're waiting for it when you look at that when you look at that charting. You know, based on when you when you sell it, you know, at, at inverted V's and buying at, at regular V's. You can just go back and forth and, and make fortunes with the stock because it is gyrating all over the place. You know, so. and there, there, there's another really big difference between the options and the stock. So like like you went through some of Tim's trades and, and even Deshaun, they talk about where they're using a dollar seventeen a share or a dollar twenty or maybe two dollars a share. These are on hundred and thirty dollar stocks. It, there, the options give the ability to leverage your capital. You don't have to have as much money and you're not borrowing anything. It's not on any kind of margin. Lots of people get in trouble because they, they have a thousand dollars and they go buy a hundred shares of Apple because they can borrow the money from their broker. They're more than willing to lend you the money. Mm -hmm. So they only have a thousand dollars of cash. They're putting in $13,000 to buy a hundred shares of, of Apple. And then Apple goes down by $10. Well, they actually lost all of their actual money and they're in a negative return because they're borrowing the money on something that has a risk of dropping. 
Yep. The option gives you the ability to use a little bit of money. You don't have to borrow anything. You can generate great returns. Instead of $13,000 invested in 100 shares of Apple, $117 on the option. So even though we teach to be able to, if it goes the wrong way, you get out quickly, you don't take a big loss. But the most you can lose is the $117. If you bought the 100 shares of stock, you could lose thirteen thousand dollars. Yeah, that. here's a good example, Randy. Randy what you're talking about? Take a hundred dollar stock, a hundred dollar stock, okay? To make to make what what these guys let's say you want to make five percent because they did this several times today. You want to make five percent on a hundred dollar stock? It's got to go at five dollars. Well, that's quite a bit, right? Uh, you guys made five point two percent on the stock going from a dollar fifty two to a dollar sixty. And that's what happens so fast. These are options. They move a little much quicker. So you, you're talking about, you know, not too many cents there. Eight cents. Don't have to go up eight cents. And you make you make more than, uh, you know, if you sit around there waiting for the stock to go up five bucks. And that kind of gets back to what Mike was talking about earlier. Dealing with stocks, you got to wait for to get those kind of gains. Then it just doesn't happen. You know, and that's the advantage. That's what we're supposed to be talking about. The advantage of, of calls, options over just owning the stock. And that's why these things happen so fast. And this is only recent because of so many things, the internet, blah, 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 all this stuff, you know, the fact that there's no commissions on most of this stuff. So, mm-hmm. Yeah, I would see such rapid change at all times. And I mean, the, the market itself transitions very quickly. Mm-hmm. Tim, are you going to say something? I thought I'd. Who? Me? No. No, uh, Tim. Yeah. Oh, I, mean, here's, I mean, here, one of the biggest advantages uh, for me is, you know, we make, at least with, with Apple recently, we, we make most of our trades in the first two minutes of the market, you know, if you devoted five minutes a day, (laughs) five days a week to what we do, you could do this. You know, you can make one or two trades with with our charting uh, and you're in and out and you're done. You're done for the day. We don't sit here all day looking at charts. We we really don't. You know, we spend 45 minutes to an hour each day uh, trading, but you know, most of our trades, at least on for Apple, happen in the first five minutes of the market. Uh, I mean, I, that's incredible to me that I can sit down on my computer using these proprietary charts, uh, make more than my mutual fund makes in five years off a couple of trades. Um, it's really kind of a no-brainer. Well, yes, yesterday, not today, but yesterday they made 46.55% over five trades in that morning session. Today they made 265 Throw up that uh, last uh, that last thing. Uh, yeah, the uh, other one. No, 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 the other one about. Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay, now you see that? You said Dick Fort flew hardy. Dick and I have been partners in this company for a long time. Now that's Dick. I mean, that's the, yeah, that's Dirk. Dirk yeah. is in is in Puerto Rico where he doesn't pay much in taxes. And then that golf cart. Now that's that's a covered call guy right there. You know, he's Puerto Rico in in uh, in his golf cart. You know. Mm-hmm. And said, yeah, and, and Dirk makes great points here, um, really advantages of, of price, leverage, and liquidity. These these are absolutely key elements to, to option trading. Thank you for bringing that up, Dirk. And I might also bring up that my golf cart is overhead cam fuel injected. His is not. So, <laughs> so if it sounds like if I were to summarize it, like the benefits of options over stock would be options allow you to take more control of your dollar and more control of your time. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we're, we're, we're nearing the end of our thing here. Uh, Mikey, you got, let me say one more thing. One more thing. Next yeah. Thursday, and it'll be, in the, it'll be uh, related to this in, in the Cal report this week. And next Thursday, we're dealing with dividends. There have been some tremendous, you will stop believe the advantages of using our covered call techniques on dividend stocks and a lot of people have never been able to afford dividend stocks or if they've got dividend stocks they really don't make any money whatsoever you're not going to believe what you can do with options from the standpoint of affording dividend stocks but just doing all kinds of things and uh so <laughs> go ahead Mike. that dirk's picture is a sailboat not a golf cart he said <laughs> oh, he's, he's in the golf cart drives around in a sailboat there you go. I got all that steering wheel, and I'm like, what? <laughs> well, see, that's that's Dirk doesn't know the difference, you know. <laughs> uh, and, uh, and, 
like he's, a, he's in Puerto Rico. Rico. You know, he, he goes sailing out on the ocean out there. So. <laughs> no, no, he tries to sail on the golf course. That's why he's in the golf course. <laughs> uh, well, yeah, I think I think Deshaun's summary was great. Um, I mean, what we've established today is stocks are great. Um, and maybe, you know, I'm not going to speak for everyone, but but in my opinion, it seems like whatever stocks can do, options can do a little bit better. Um we have people in the room that trade options from, you know, uh, you know, personally, like we used to trade like 60, 80 cent Apple stuff a few years ago, um, up to Randy's, what, it, what SPX are like 20 still, 20 per option. The, the SPX are $20? Yeah, average price per option. Oh, they, uh, today they're around uh, 11 to 12 though. Okay. Yeah. So anywhere from like eighty cents to eleven to twelve dollars. When you when you think of of you know what how different that that financial item is that you're that you're using really gives you so much uh, variability. Not to mention you have expirations from now to three years from now. So um, really cool stuff. Uh, again, intro to options is is on uh, is this weekend. You can still sign up um, through our website in the in the bio. Um, and it's just going to be uh, it's just going to be a basic introduction to all things options, whether you've whether you've tr been trading stocks for a while or never touched any of it. Um, all those complicated terminologies, we'll just simplify it, cut it all down. It's not as as hard as the financial institutions want you to believe because you can do it yourself, and that's what they don't yeah. want you to find out. Yeah. Um, well, there's a there, there, there's a key comment from Ricky. It says knowledge is power. Yes. You need to learn. Take the education. Get the education. Then yeah. what you're going to do is educated and you can do it a whole lot better. Don't just go out yeah. there and jump into the deep end and hope you can swim. And one quick thing, I think Tim was trying to say something for you, Tim. No, no. Okay. okay. Well, I got to wrap this up. We're almost out of time. And this is with Micah. Micah. Yeah. I think Micah does all our <clears throat> media stuff and, and the, the websites and kind of stuff. Do we still have the special on, uh, on the micro moment trading uh, that you can only sign up for it on your on your website. Um, I believe that ended with the year. I'm sorry. I believe that ended with uh, with oh, the year. Okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah. For a moment specifically. Yeah. Go, go to our website www.microbooktrain.com and, and Mike has lots of good stuff on there, all kinds of things. Well, and then I think those sounds were somebody trying to cut us off. So no, thank that you. That was uh, a, a Amber yeah. alert came over my phone. Yeah, um, Randy and I just uh, got the Amber Alerts. Yeah. <laughs> okay. okay. Well, thanks, you guys, for being here. Thanks, for everybody attending. Attendance every Thursday here. We're going to have, uh, again, you know, exciting, you know, roundtable discussion next week. And we appreciate Micah being here, sort of the MC for the first time. Yeah. And that's good. Although it's not the Great first time we've been with job. it for a long yeah. time. Yeah. He sort of danced his way into this job. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thank you yeah. all very much. See you later. Appreciate it.